Hi there, Skitty Vinstadi, CEO of OneWire, and welcome to Open Door. Today we're going to go interview my good friend Lee Ainsley, who is the CEO and founder of Maverick Capital, one of the most successful long short hedge funds on the street today. He's a great guy, he really knows his stuff. Let's go see what he's up to. Lee, I can't thank you enough for having me over here today. We'd love to talk about your firm and what you're up to, but if we could go back to when you were a kid, where you grew up, what your upbringing was like, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, I grew up in Virginia, first Alexandria and then Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, my father was a school teacher and eventually a headmaster of, of schools in Virginia. Um, it was a very um, fun and, and, in hindsight, a rather relaxed childhood. Back when I was in eighth grade, I was the, uh, the, the nerd that actually spent a lot of time programming uh, for different purposes, and I was asked by uh, a teacher in the high school if I could put together a program for an investment club they were starting, which would help them track which stocks had been picked by which students, and then they could ultimately judge who had put together the best portfolio. Uh, and writing this it actually sounded kind of fun to me, so oh. I asked if I could join that investment club, even though I wasn't quite in high school almost. Uh, and they allowed me to do that, and that really sparked uh, an interest, which has stayed with me ever since. Okay, so then you went to um, uh, UVA, uh, which I take you had a great experience there, and then you went into the accounting field. Uh, I worked for an accounting firm, Pete okay. Mark, but uh, I had a degree in engineering. Uh, okay. and frankly, I'd never even taken accounting or finance or anything else through college, um, but I went to work for them as a consultant. Uh, and I went to Pete Mark, because, and I had a few different things I could have done, but they really allowed me to focus on small business consulting, and I was still in the mode of trying to figure out what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. and I thought that experience would allow me to see the most different types of businesses in a compressed time frame on the hope that something would really ignite a, a more serious interest. Okay, and then you went to business school at University of North Carolina. I did. Okay, and what drove you to make that decision to, to, to go to B-School? I think in large part because that point by that point I had understood that um, I had um, uh, certain skills that I needed to develop and gain certain certain knowledge at having ever taken accounting or finance, um, and I thought business school would be the best way to try to try to get that. Okay, and you said earlier that at that time you you met Julian Robertson. Is that correct? Uh, at business school, so okay. he was on the board of the University of North Carolina, uh, and I was asked to work with the board on a couple of different projects. And Julian and I got to know each other and uh, spent a lot of time talking about stocks. And back then, Tiger. Management was a rather small place, but by comparison to what it became, where they managed about four hundred million dollars and had a handful of employees, and so it was early days with Tiger, which was fortunate for me. Uh, and they asked me to come join after business school, which, which is what I did. When I first joined, I think I was the fifth or sixth investment professional, and so we were all basically generalists. We did a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. By the time I left, I uh, ran the technology effort. You had the nerve and the guts to go out on your own. Uh, tell me what that decision process was like. Well, I think really, um, in hindsight, it was enabled by a level of uh, naivete, which uh, I just don't think I fully recognized how challenging it would be. Mm -hmm. um, I was 28 years old at the time. I was approached by a family that had been successful in a few different ventures um, with the idea of starting a firm. Uh, I declined because I felt I had the best job in the world and I was certainly being treated quite well. But uh, the more that we discussed this opportunity, I did recognize, gee, one of these days I probably will want to do this, and the odds of finding an opportunity with this level of support uh, is going to be pretty slim. So even though I felt that it was a bit premature, and this is, I was married, I didn't have kids, all it makes it a little easier to take risk. Sure. Um, I felt it was worth, worth that shot. I got you. What do you think has been your biggest challenge uh, over the years that you've been working I think the, the biggest challenge for our business mm -hmm. is management of talent. Right. At the end of the day, we really only have two assets. One, the, the confidence and loyalty of our investors. And secondly, the, the talent of the team that we're putting together. And um, it's a challenging business in that people have many different opportunities. Uh, and so you have to build a culture where people really want to be part of your team, mm -hmm. want to be part of the collective success and they feel that they're in an environment where they're very likely to be successful. We really try to set up people um, in their own boat with the rest of their team. Uh, one thing we do as an example, I think it's pretty unusual, we've never tracked an individual's P&L. Mm -hmm. Now we can give you a ream of statistics regarding the success or, or lack of success of any individual team, but we want everybody on that team to recognize they're in this boat 
and they'll be judged by the success of how that team performs. Okay. What do you think about um, Wall Street right now as a career? I mean, obviously, there are many, many different aspects of Wall Street, but if you were in school today, do you think it's as attractive as it was when you first got out of school? If I were young, once again, thinking about where I want to invest my career, I'd, I'd be sure to give a lot of thought to where someone can add value on a sustainable basis. Uh, and I would argue investment management could very well be one of those areas mm -hmm. um, because it's going to be a more challenging future okay. for Wall Street overall. Um, Lee, you've also done a lot in terms of, of giving back. Can you tell us a little bit about what your philosophy is uh, in that regard? Well, I think anyone that's been uh, fortunate to have a level of success feels a duty to make sure that they are uh, doing their part to help those who have not been as fortunate. And indeed, uh, most people living in poverty here in New York City is through no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. It has to do with what zip code they were born in. It has to do with how their parents uh, behaved at certain parts in their lifetime. Uh, and so most of my philanthropic efforts <coughs> excuse me, have been focused on Robin Hood. Right. Uh, which is focused on trying to solve poverty here in New York City. One of the things I think makes uh, Robin Hood a bit unusual is that all the expenses, and this is all the research we do down to the tablecloth at the benefit, uh, are paid for by the board. And so every penny of in the, of outside donation goes directly to work in the community. If you could think of, on your bucket list, you've got three things you want to do. What do you think the three things would be? You know, I'm sort of spoiled, so most things that I want to do, I've tried to go ahead and, and do. Uh, I think most of them would uh, revolve around doing things with my family. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to ski moguls as well as my two boys do. Uh, that, that's maybe achievable goal. Uh, love to get the handicap to, to single digit. Uh, but most importantly, there's too many things I've enjoyed doing in, in my life that uh, the more I can share those experiences, whether it's shooting or visiting beautiful places, um, with my kids is what I get the most excited about doing. Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, listen, Lee Ainsley, uh, again, cannot thank you enough for having me over here today. Really appreciate it. Not at all. Thanks for the time. You bet, bud.